Hello, this is Lauren Brantley Books, and I'm here today with a review of Lobozona by Romina Garber. This is an own voices story based off of Argentina folklore, and it's about a teen named Manu Manuela Azul, who finds out that she's a rare female werewolf and ends up going to a magical school where witches and werewolves go to hone their craft. When we first meet Manu, she lives a sheltered life inside of a tiny apartment in Miami where she is forbidden from leaving. She can't go to school, she can't have friends, nothing. The only people in her life are her single mother and her honorary aunt, Perla. Manu and her mother are illegal immigrants from Argentina and are currently hiding out in Miami. They are on the run from both ICE and Manu's father's family. Fierro, Manu's father, was part of a criminal activity which forced Manu's mother to flee Argentina. Fierro has been missing for many years and no one knows if he is still alive. Manu also has a bizarre secret of her own. Her eyes are bright yellow with silver stars for pupils and she has to wear sunglasses at all times to hide them so people don't freak out about her eyes. Another odd thing about Manu is that her periods are so intense that her mother sedates her with these pills every month for three days straight, during which Manu has vivid dreams of a magical castle. Manu's mother pretends to be a housekeeper, but she actually runs an underground medical clinic. After Manu Manuela's mother's clinic is raided by ICE, her mother gets captured and sent to a detention center. In order to escape being detained herself, Manu runs away from home by sneaking into the back of a truck. As it so happens, this truck takes her deep into the Everglades. It turns out the driver of the truck is going to a school of magical witches and werewolves called El Labyrinto, or The Labyrinth, as it translates to. Manu enters a magical society called Septimus, which is based on Argentine folklore, and learns about her own magical heritage. There is a legend in Argentina that the seventh consecutive son of a family will be born a werewolf, and the seventh daughter will be born a witch. In the world of Lobozona, that legend is true. In Septimus, all the women are witches and all the men are werewolves. There is a strict gender binary and gender roles in their society, many of which are pretty regressive. Like our own world, there is a lack of women, witches in this case, in power, and witches are not allowed to leave El Labyrinto without a male escort. Also, witches are all required to have children regardless of their own wishes in order to maintain the population. So despite being, Septimus being a magical society, they are far from a socially progressive one. Manu enters El Labyrinto and pretends to be a transfer student from far away Manada, or PAC, which are the family units in Septimus society. She meets two girls, Cesa and Catalina. Cesa warms up to her pretty quickly, but Catalina is more hostile and standoffish. Over time, she becomes befriends with both of them, as well as meet other witches and werewolves from El, El Labyrinto. At first, Manu is assumed to be a witch because she is a woman, but she has no magical powers to show, and so her friends help her cheat in class to make it look like she has magic. Eventually, Manu's true powers manifest, but it turns out she's not a witch, she's a werewolf, a lobozona, a female werewolf. This is unprecedented in Septimus society, and to make matters worse, Manu is a hybrid. Her father, Fiero, was actually a werewolf, but her mother, the one that was captured by ice, is a human. Fierro is actually a wanted criminal from Septimus society because he was seen as revolutionary that tried to push the boundaries of what was socially acceptable. Hybrids are illegal in Septimus society, and the penalty for being one is death. So now Manu and her friends have to somehow keep her hybrid status away from the authorities of the society, called the Calzadors. If anyone finds out she's a hybrid and reports it, she's good as dead. There's a good parallel between Manu's undocumented status in Miami and her illegal status in Septimus society. This is a character who's seen as both illegal in both worlds and trying to make a place for herself despite the hostility she faces. This book is about identity and what it means to be marginalized. The author of this book, Romina Garber, is an Argentine immigrant herself and so this is very much an own voices story. I like how Romina shows us how brutal ICE can be towards immigrants. There's a hard to read scene in which a woman is beaten by an ICE agent repeatedly and references are made about the harsh conditions in which prisoners are kept in detention centers. In the beginning of the book, you really get to feel the tension and pressure of what it feels to be undocumented, and the constant threat of ICE and law enforcement in general hangs over Manu and her mother. It makes it all the more painful to watch Manu later struggle with her illegal status in Septimus society, both as a female werewolf and a hybrid. Once the former is known, it makes it difficult for her to attend El Labyrinto, and if the latter is ever found out, she'll be taken by the Septimus law enforcement and put to death. In both human and Septimus society, Manu is a marginalized and ostracized person. It was nice to see Manu eventually gain supporters and find other teens who are willing to go up against the conventions of their society. By the end, Manu has a small group of rebels who want to change the limits of Septimus society and are unafraid to stand up for what they believe in. 
One of the few drawbacks in this book is the overabundance of Harry Potter references in this book. Manu's journey is constantly being compared to Harry Potter's journey, and the book series comes up re relatively frequently. This book came out in 2020, so it's probably too late to scrub the Harry Potter references after J.K. Rowling came out with her transphobic essay. Depending on how you feel about J.K. Rowling and Harry Potter in the light of J.K. Rowling's transphobia, these frequent Harry Potter references might ruin the book for you. For me, it was annoying, but overall the book was so good I managed to tune them out. Hopefully the sequel does not have these references, but we will see. Despite this drawback, I really enjoyed Lopezona. It was a great introduction to me for Argentina folklore. I also love how much Spanish there was in this book. This book probably has the most lines of Spanish I've ever read in a book. Don't worry if you don't speak Spanish because the author provides translation of all Spanish lines. There's also a lot of Argentine culture in this book from foods to customs and it really enhanced the world building of the book. Despite the many references to Harry Potter and insisting that Manu's journey is like Harry's, this is very much its own magical school story with its own unique feel and messages. There's some typical teen romance in this as well, and while it wasn't particularly spectacular, it would be fine for most YA audiences. The real standard of this book is the world it creates are the messages about marginalization and identity, and I think the book is strongest when it focuses on those two aspects. I recommend Lobozona to fantasy lovers, especially people who like stories about magical schools. If you are at all curious, be sure to pick up this book. I understand there is a sequel to Lobozona, and I will definitely be checking it out. I'll be sure to be back with a review of that as well. Thank you so much for watching my review of Lobozona by Romina Garber. This is Lauren Brantley Books, and if you have any suggestions for what I should read next, please let me know in the comments below. Also, feel free to subscribe for more reviews like this, and a like on this video goes a long way. Thank you for watching, and I will see you in the next video. Bye!